Turkish football, in the same season where a referee was punched in the head by a club president, somehow that's still not the most insane thing that's happened this season. Galatasaray, Fenerbahce, two of the big three of the biggest clubs in the entirety of Turkey, and of course, all represented in Istanbul. On Sunday, the Turkish Super Cup took place between Galatasaray and Fenerbahce, and one key issue happened. The under-19s took the field for Fenerbahce, and another key issue, they walked off the pitch in the first minute. The game was abandoned, and Galatasaray won the game in the first minute minute. It's time to talk about Turkish football and more specifically the Fenerbahce situation. Tell me your thoughts down below, make sure to like and also subscribe if you're new. Also for the best football print celebrating your club's achievements, then my own design company Mazar Designs to Code UK, link down below top of the description. Use code TURKEY for 15% off all items. Turkish football is just another level of insane. Passionate, but insanity. To explain what happened with Fenerbahce, let's go straight from the horse's mouth. Fenerbahce themselves, who put out this club statement. Now, you may be here because of two reasons. Number one, because you saw what happened with the Super Cup, or because you saw that Fenerbahce are actually in the process of considering leaving the Turkish Super League. Now, I know you're thinking, it's a team that are in Turkey. How is that going to work? Fenerbahce, as a club, has reasons to believe that the Turkish Football Federation have been unfair on them. They put out the following club statement, as you can see here, saying that in the last 20 years, they have been fighting a unjust footballing system. And they included some points that they felt was necessary. One point was the fact they lost three championships in seven seasons. And one example was a match versus Denis Le Sport in 2006. The game was stopped many times for objects being thrown onto the field. In 2010-11, they were accused, in their opinion falsely, of match fixing by an alleged terrorist organisation that was infiltrated within the state, which is quite a claim. And this claim lasted 10 years with the club fighting to prove their innocence. Losing millions upon millions of commercial losses by being accused of match fixing and were suspended from taking part in the Champions League due to this. On April 4th, 2015, the Fenerbahce team bus was shot on the way home after a 5-1 win at Race Sport. The team bus was shot nine years on, and nine years later, they still do not know the perpetrators. And it highlighted one recent event that added on top of this, a match against Trabzonspor this season. Less than a month ago on March 17th, they claimed that security measures was inadequate that led to hundreds of people storming onto the field and attacking the Fenerbahce players. To the players defending themselves from the attacks of the fans, Fenerbahce as a club was punished. Due to these events, and I'm even sure even more involved, members of the Fenerbahce assembly went to go and speak about potentially leaving the Turkish Super League. Now you may be questioning why is the Turkish Super Cup playing so late on in the season, as typically this will be played around midway through the season. Well, this was meant to be played in Riyadh. Just like the Spanish Super Cups, they go to Riyadh for money. The league sells the cup for money and they go play over there. And it was meant to be played over in December. However, it was suspended. Only hours before kickoff, the Saudi organisers refused to let both teams wear t-shirts and carry banners honouring Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, I'm so sorry, who was the founder of modern Turkey. It's almost like it's a stupid idea to play your domestic cups and tournaments in a completely foreign nation for no reason other than monetary gain. But who am I to say that? One final thing to keep in mind is that Fenerbahce plays in the Europa Conference League in the quarterfinals very soon. And they asked if the game can be delayed because they're playing in a very monumental game. Most recently, a clip came out from a referee that refereed in the game between Galatasaray and Fenerbahce. This led to them wanting a different referee for the Super Cup against them that he admitted to reversing a VR decision in favour of Galatasaray because of pressure from the players. They also demanded a foreign referee, not by the Turkish Federation, to make sure that the game was still fair. Their point has been clear. 
fair competition. This was obviously rejected. The game happened on time that it was meant to. And Fenerbahce instead listed their under-19s. Fenerbahce ended a statement of the following. We emphasise that we took to the field not to win but to defend the truth. Just as we have stood tall against lawlessness and injustice yesterday, today, and will continue to do so tomorrow. I am interested for your guys' opinions on this, and especially if you are a Turkish follower or subscriber, please let me know how is this deemed in Turkey, because of course it's much more closer to home back there, probably felt a lot more seriously, and I'm sure the comments may be completely um, rife with argumentation as the likes of Galatasaray, Besiktas and Fenerbahce fans are all come together. Honestly, if I was a person in Turkey, I just wouldn't even bother to support a team at like the lower mid-pack because it seems like it's much more peaceful over there. <laughs> to clarify the most recent event between Trabzonspor and Fenerbahce, Fenerbahce of course had two players that was given a one-match suspension for punching the fans. In fairness, the fans were on the pitch to attack them in the first place, so I get their annoyances. And in response, Trabzonspor has to play behind closed doors for six matches and was fined 3 million lira. After this, members of Fenerbahce voted if they should withdraw from the Turkish Super League and they voted to stay in it. And the game was a complete mess, with the Fenerbahce head course revealing that him and his staff were struck by objects, resulting in injuries, swollen heads, swollen jaws and bust lips for not just him but also the players as well. It's a complete mess. This was deemed as the final straw of why Fenerbahce feels like they've been dealt a tough hand by the Turkish Football Federation. It went so far that even the Fenerbahce media team listed a 28 minute long video indicating the injustice that they believe they've received in the last 20 or so years. And just to highlight how crazy Turkish football is, when Trabzonspor was given a six match ban for their fans to be inside stadiums and to be playing behind closed doors, the Trabzonspor Twitter account X account, I guess you could say now, put this out. Now, you can't read it because it is in Turkish, but it basically says, F your justice, get up from your seats and resign. This is a tweet from the official club. I don't get why they wouldn't take it well because their fans literally attack the players. I don't know what you want them to do. And if you want to know what makes this even more interesting, let's look at the league table. Galatasaray are currently ahead of Fenerbahce by two points and they are both... 30 points clear compared to first place. I mean, that's just insanity in itself. And guess which two teams play against each other on the second to last game of the season. I am a bit annoyed it's on the final day of Premier League season because this may be the greatest game I've ever seen. And I'd be surprised if it actually finishes. And also because I kind of wanted to look into it myself, I did mention that a referee got punched by a club president early this season, and yes, that is true, and I kind of wanted to kind of delve into that a little bit. Meet Farouk Koka. Definitely saying it wrong. I'm not Turkish, okay? I'm sorry. In a match featuring Ankara Gutsu and Rai Spor, it ended 1-1. The match had some controversial moments, including a disallowed goal and a red card. However, it kicked off in the 97th minute when Rai Spor scored an equaliser. The referee named Halil Umut Mele blew the whistle for full time, in which the club president, Farouk Kolka, despite being dragged back by his colleagues, steamed onto the pitch and punched him in the face straight into his cheek, knocking him onto the floor. What made it even worse was two other men also steamed on the pitch alongside him and kicked the referee on the pitch, kicking a man while he is down. The referee was taken to hospital that evening. Now, how do you think that Ankara Gutsu fans responded? Well, they showed support for their president, with their major fan group releasing a statement supporting him saying we stand with Koka. Koka, of course, later on, resigned from the club. Turkish football was suspended for a short time period after this event, and then it restarted, and instantly, another controversy happened on December 19th. A top flight game between the clubs Trabzonspor and Istanbul Spor took place. Trabzonspor went 2-1 ahead with a goal from Paul Oonatshu. After the Istanbul players early on in the game claimed that they should have had a penalty, the manager of Istanbul Spor demanded his players to leave the field as a sign of protest. The match was therefore suspended. Turkish football is always mental. 
and will always be mental. In November of 2023, Trabzonspor, who won the 2022 title, came out with a statement. They declared that unfavourable decisions went against them in games against Galatasaray, Hatiaspor, and Pendik Sport, claiming that these decisions was completely intentional and they cannot call referee error. This is not new when it comes to Trabzonspor 2. Back in February 2016, a large group of fans took to the streets brandishing red cards in protest to referee Denise Atez Bitnil, as this referee red carded four of Trabzonspor's players in a 2-1 defeat to Galatasaray. This all goes back to Fenerbahce, where the club president Ali Koch commented on strange referee mistakes happening for the whole league and that they've all lost patience with the TFF, claiming that referees were trying to block the path for Fenerbahce to winning the league title. And guess what? Galatasaray thinks the same thing too. Too. Vice President Erdin Timur said they would dedicate a weekly program each week on the club's TV channel of all the incorrect decisions that's went against them. And the worst of this came in 2019, where club president at the time, Hassan Kartal, the former Rice Bowl president, after a 3 to defeat to Galatasaray, said, and I quote, If I had my gun, I would have shot him. I mean it. Good thing I didn't have one. If someone had my gun, they would have killed him. Another example back in 2022 in the same stadium when a fan ran onto the pitch in an attempt to attack the referee after a game between Ankara Gutsu and Besitas. On that occasion, Joseph de Sousa, who was the Brazilian defender for Besitas at the time, intervened and was shoved the fan to the ground. Due to this, the Turkish Football Federation suspended him for controlling the fan that was on the pitch to attack the referee. Quoted after the suspension, you well remember the day they kill a player or the day they attack a referee and later that season he left Besiktas and went to China. In the Premier League you see week in week out of many people going against the referees. I for one of them don't agree with the current system of VAR in the English Premier League and if it was my personal decision I would rather have them remove it. And the main key issue I find is consistency. However nonetheless disagreeing with decisions is one thing but allowing a sports culture especially in the Turkish Football League to become so consumed with the officials that a club president feels that he has reason to go onto the field and punch a referee in the head or a club president threaten to shoot him this is when we step over the line tell me your thoughts about turkish football and about this entire fenerbahce situation i hope i'm saying it accurately Pro probably not turkish football lads stay mental